I had I ended up having prostate issues because I wasn't having sex mm-hmm. and with the heat and like all that stuff, right? And now prostate uh-huh. cancer runs in my family. Like my dad had it and he got it taken care of, but my grandfather. Let me hold on. Let me ask you this: Was this a Dominican doctor that uh, told you that? Because that makes a lot of <laughs> no, sense. No, no, no. Let me tell you, I, you, you have no to have make, it. It, make it this stuff come <laughs> out. You don't have any no sex. You know that's the problem. No <laughs> that, no, is I that can't. why my is that why my tooth hurts? Yeah, <laughs> because you don't have any no sex. <laughs> and then all the sex, the energy building the tooth, they hurt. The tooth, yeah, it's very bad. That's why, because you don't have any no sex. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian, writer, and filmmaker Keenan Floyd. He's here. We discuss what happened to me to the Me Too movement, the BLM movement being a form, former Jehovah Witness and how religion affects your ability to have it, how it helps and hurts you uh, in the social dynamics of dating women. Yeah, and uh, it was a really good episode, uh, but also we kept talking. Uh, I'm excited about this week's bonus episode, and if you want to listen to the bonus episode, uh, go over to patreon.com slash manschool202 and subscribe, and it helps support the show, and we do all our bonus content and listener mail over there, and you can communicate with us directly. Uh, this week's bonus show, we go really into detail in a great story about how Keenan got kicked out of the Jehovah's Witnesses for uh, for for laying pipe. Let's be honest, and uh, it's a great story. And uh, so, join us over at Patreon.com/slash Manschool202 for that. And uh, also, if you want consultations, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com to set up a consultation. If you want consultation from Dante, you go to DanteNero.com and click on consult. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, this is a special show. Um, and I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Nice, um, finally. A special guest. And uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, how you doing? How are you ready to rock and roll? I'm, in, I'm, I'm living a great life, but no matter how great my life is, the one problem I have is I have a tough time keeping these alligators down. It's difficult, and it's difficult. It's People difficult. don't mention how difficult it is. And also, you can ne- you're never always going to keep them down. No. They keep getting up. They keep getting up. <laughs> Living, breathing animals. Uh, let's talk about my my guest today. Uh, we've been trying to get him on this thing for a minute. And in black people talk, that's a long mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Anywhere uh, from eight months to seven years. This dude, a uh, filmmaker, uh, really creative dude. Really, really, really smart dude. Um and a uh, ex cult uh, member. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> we'll get into nice. that. Uh, give it, give it up for my boy Keenan Floyd, y'all. Give it up for Keenan Floyd. What up? What up, baby? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Thanks for having me. What's up, Dante? It's good to hear from what's you, bro. It's good to have you on. You know all that good shit. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, I have been waiting a little bit, not impatiently, but with excitement. I, I mean, because so. you always doing something. You always into something. Is he loud enough, Harry? It could be. A, it could be a little bit higher. Can, can should, you I get, it? should I get? Oh yeah. Now? Oh, yeah. much better. How yeah. about now? We good? Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's much better. That's much better. Cool, cool, cool. We need yeah, that yeah. deep, rich voice. That's a nice voice. You got good voice uh, voice for voiceovers. Yeah. Uh, for, for horror films and or stakes. <laughs> they both have the same type of voiceover. And sex talks. And sex uh, talks, yeah. 70s r and <laughs> I, I've been hearing that. I've been hearing that lately, so... Yeah. Man, if they still sold it, remember back in the day, Dante, they used to sell the record. You see them on TV, the uh, like soul hits of the 70s, and they have the VO. We got all the great classics. Like, get all the great classics. And then at the end, hey, man, can I borrow that? No, nah, my brother. You got nah, to get your own. You got to get your own. These classics. They those, commercials, those commercials were always steamy. It was some chick in bed naked reading yeah. a letter that her dude left the night before. Satin sheets. <laughs> Satin. Dude, white people just they just played the hits like it was fun, but for some reason the soul thing had to have an element of like uber sexiness in it. Mm. The the white ones, like, these are great songs. You could play them. <laughs> some of us. Hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. <laughs> Hello, my girl. <laughs> but some of us that didn't have Cinemax stayed up late for those commercials. Oh, that's <laughs> true. One o'clock. The infra- that's sex true. Infomercials coming on. Right yeah, after that, the, well, you got it also on Saturday afternoon before Soul Train. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Afro, Afro yeah. Sheen. Yeah. Nefertiti. <laughs> they spin her around and with the Afro. It's weird because then it would switch and then it was that Slim Whitman commercial. Remember oh, yeah, the yeah. Slim Whitman? Okay. might be. Or, or they would sell thousands of knives for $8. That's right. Yeah. Um, it's crazy because I, I was listening to, um, I think it was Barry White. And he, uh, he had a, he had a, a three minute and 45 second talking interlude. How you doing, baby? Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know I love you. You know, the love, the way I love, the way we love. and we With love that bass together. in the background? Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole beat. Boom, boom. And then uh, sometimes I, I find myself, I just can't stop thinking about you anymore. Then there was wind chimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry White would do that. He did a cover of Billy Joel's Just the Way You Are, right? Yeah. And then he wrote a whole intro. I, now oh, yeah. that I remember that. Come on, we've been together a while. That's the one. It's three I, I take that it's three minutes. Just the way 40. you are. Three minutes and forty seven seconds. He didn't he didn't even start singing. Oh, Don't go changing. That's at three minutes and forty seven seconds. I'm like, God <laughs> damn. That was Barry White was big, even in the Latino community. My 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 aunts and uncles played the shit out of Barry White. They love Barry White. Well he's he's the the Michael Jordan of fucking you know, that's you, true. That was universal. You know, still there's nobody who took that crown, right? Like who is the new <laughs> the uh, fuck albums now? Well, it ain't you know, nobody. Barry White. Plus, I you know I went to see him in concert. No doubt. And he had a a fifty piece van, a fifty piece orchestra. Sure. Everybody was in satin pajamas, right? Oh, God damn. The whole orchestra and the and the, the each one of the podiums was satin like a bed. In the back was like velvet, huge, velvet. No satin. Satin. Oh, satin. satin. oh wait, wait, satin. Wait, wait. With uh, with a, the back was a headboard that said BW, right? So they're all fucking in his bed, kind of. They were like, all yeah, in the, the stage. Whole, was his bed? The whole band was in his bed <laughs> with BW, and then he he came out with Paisley with Paisley pajamas and a smoking jacket, and he had two chicks in uh martini glasses dancing around in the glass. Ah, damn! Never even he never even looked at them. Never even acknowledged that, that they one. existed. They were just set dressing. Just, just there's shaking the hand. There's what nobody up? like that because no one's writing love making music anymore. You're right. You're right. You, you see what Tank said. Tank Tank said, "Look, it's in black music. They pay for the violence. They want yeah. the violence. Mm, they they want enough, the, yeah. They don't like. They said, what's the go? Uh, what's the guy from um, American Idol? Stand nuts." The Stan Smith, was it Sam Smith? The, Sam the, Smith, the English singer. Yeah, they go. He goes. Tank was like, he gets that song and he gets spins on on pop stations. He goes, they w they would never give that to a a black artist to to blow up like that. It's just not. It's just not the way it's done. Well, there's a there's actually a viral video going around now. I think Sierra. You guys know Sierra, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. Wilson. Yeah. So I hang him body. Yeah, I think she's actually working on a new album or something, but a video came out where a new song that she's doing is all about independent women. And in the song, she says, you don't need no man. You're independent. Fuck these niggas. You know, like shit like that, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going viral now because people are like, obviously, you're in a loving relationship. Let's roll the clip back. And it shows her talking about her husband and how he supports her and all that stuff. And they asked the question, they're like, okay, now the question is, why are you singing and selling something that, that has you don't nothing believe. to do? You don't even believe it. It has mm. nothing to do with your life. Yeah, that you can't speak on anymore. Yeah, that you're not following that. You're selling that. Well, that's how I felt about Beyonce. But yeah. we don't have to get into my feelings about Beyonce because yeah, yeah, it's I controversial. Mean, you, you can have your opinion, but, but just, Beyonce just don't say what you usually say. Beyonce uh, does the thing where all the single ladies she hadn't. She, she wasn't single. single. She, Not you know, only like, that, women she, run the world. She's with she the most cheated. powerful man. She got cheated on and stayed with him. Mm -hmm. So she, she's she's selling one thing and and not and not practicing on the other hand. But they but, buy. She was she was with Jay Z. Wasn't she with Jay Z when she was in Destiny's Child? Like weren't mm. they like dating or something off and on? Mm, I don't. I don't think know. So. I don't know. But I know it was okay. soon after that. At least I know. Yeah. You know, 
but it, it's it's an interesting thing. But this is this is again what you see, what what I talk about. You, you know, I talk about on the show is just authenticity. It's like people will sell. People will sell what they. Oh God, what's wrong with my camera? People That's will it? sell uh, what they what what sells. Mm -hmm. They won't. But what they don't understand is that we decide. You the, the industry decides what what people will buy anyway. They force feed you these these narratives and stuff that they only green only light. They only green light the narratives that they want. And all women are trash and mm. all women are this and all women are that. I, I, I mean, and the reality, the reality of it is um, that you, you, we cause this. Like if as men, we don't accept gold digger chicks, if we don't accept chicks who want to uh, put avocados up their ass for money, if we decide, hey, if we decide tomorrow that an OnlyFans means that you are undateable, then we wouldn't have it. I mean, I think that it comes down to that anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I, because you know, it's it's like this. Or you mean the 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 behavior that men accept for yeah, it for absolutely. the sake of, for the sake of getting laid is what it is basically at well, the end of the I day. Mean, I mean, look at it this way: they don't sell DeLoreans anywhere anymore, right? And that's right. because no one bought them. Right, right. So, so what you're saying is is exactly true. The way econo the economy works is when there's no demand, it doesn't exist, right? Right. So, when you're like, well, how come all these women are shaking their ass on Instagram, but they also want respect? How yeah. come the the daughters off the Bernie Mac show are spreading it wide open, and Rachel Dolezal, who went from the head of the NAACP to spread it open on OnlyFans. Why is that a thing? Oh, because there's people paying for it. Wait, wait, hold up. <laughs> she says, wait a minute. <laughs> Who's spreading it all over? The the Rachel Dolezal. You remember the white yeah. black? Oh, she's got an OnlyFans. She got OnlyFans now. How hi, how <laughs> and, and who's on the Bernie Mac show is is spreading the, the it? two the two daughters. The little uh, one and the and the the, the 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 big one and the little one now. The little one just got on it like last week. I mean, they that you know, it's been twenty years almost since the Bernie yeah. Mac show. She is a full adult, but still, I mean, yeah, that's I'm man, it's wild that people do it. I also, to some extent, I get it, I understand it, but at the same time, it's just crazy that that's what it's come to. That everyone is just going to do pornography. Basically, it's, it's these women were on top. Right, yeah. Rachel Dolezal was like the head of an NAACP chapter. Uh, these girls were on a hit show, and on, that, on a hit right. show, successful and show, syndicated show. And now it's like, oh, I either I can't afford this lifestyle, or something's happening where I'm doing this, and it's because I'm doing what makes money. But you know, we, it, there's a there's a cycle. I don't think they're making the same kind of money that they were making on. No, of on course not. Yeah. It, you, well, you, wait, wait. On TV. Well, in here's general, the, I don't think they're making the money on these here's only fans. The, here's the weird part. Some people they might be, because there's no middleman. When you get a show, when you're on whatever show you're on, you got an agent, you got a manager, you got the network sign whatever deal. Then they take it out of your end. I I know that uh, what's his name? T Pain. Uh, yeah. He, you know, he's a gamer now, right? Right. He's on Twitch just playing video games. He says he has made more money playing video games than he did in his in, uh, in this couple of years than he did his entire run in the music industry because it goes right to him. There's no middleman. There's no yeah, manager, I that, executive. But I yeah. That, I think that gaming is a viable thing whereas I think uh, look, I I, you know, that, I mean, if we look at my, who I follow on Instagram, my Instagram is a ridiculous amount of fat booties, big juicy titties, um, tiny weight, just twerking, a lot of, even midgets, a lot of, and then motivational of, quotes, a lot of, a lot of yeah. little people with fat asses. I mean, I, I but I mean, a lot of, on the in Jamaica, rolling around on the just twerking in the house on a balcony, and I'm at a point where I don't even like. I used to save 
you know how you can save certain pictures. I had a, I have an mm. exorbitant gallery, right? A collection, Where, just a, just a <laughs> collector's was... item of, 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 uh, ass just, shots, the basically. Botchery yeah. And, and so, and I can't tell you the last time I looked at my gallery. I don't even like pictures. I don't even like and share booty shots no more. I, you well, know, I, I look at it, but I just scroll. I just keep on scrolling. Here, here's my question, Dante, because this happens to me every now and then. Do you ever find a day where it's too much? And not and not that you don't like ass and titties and stuff, but someday you open Instagram and you're just like, I'm sick of all of this shit. Like this yeah, is well, I mean, I will I will definitely be scrolling and go, what all right, move on. And then I'll see I'll see something like a a, a little girl and she'll be hanging out with her dad. And she'll she's there's this little girl that sings R and B songs and she's like she's like she's like four and she's like and he's like where did you learn that and she's she's like you don't know nothing about this she's four right <laughs> so and she's so I mean it's stuff like that that kind of touches me I think because I'm oversaturated where when it comes to booty 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 here's some little Asian Shaolin monk, you know what I mean? I'll stop for that. Or I'll stop the Well, it loses it, its uniqueness. Everything loses its once you yes. get it, you know, it's like a strawberry ice cream. If you keep eating strawberry ice cream, yeah. you'll get sick of it. You're just yeah. like, whatever it is, if you overindulge in anything, you get tired of it. And then hence it loses its value, which is also what happens when dudes get into that world where you know, whatever, you're famous, you're a famous musician, you're you're in the NFL, whatever, and you have access to this unlimited supply, eventually you do get tired of it and then you have to keep upping it and upping the stakes or whatever. So that happens in real and life. And the too. next thing you know, Harry's dating a dude. And what I'm now? Like, Wait a minute, what now? <laughs> well, <laughs> it, but but it happens in movies all the time. Cause like to your point, you see all the all the all the uh nastiness, all the sluttiness. And then you come across a young lady that's like a real estate agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she looks good. You know what I mean? Well, like, she, how about the teacher? Like a t just like, like a teacher, yeah. and you be like, they look good, and it's like they're not shaking nothing. They're just they're just attractive, and you're like, man, who is that? Yeah, yeah. Well, because that's of interest. Because yeah. generally, um, I stopped following a couple of people. The the one that I stopped, I it was the. Uh, when TikTok first started, it was all about like dancing. They would do all these dances or whatever. Oh, I don't watch any. And I and I'm I've, I've literally unfollowed. I go, I'm not I'm not doing it. It just aggravated me. As soon me. as goes, somebody goes, I'm like, ah, get out of me. Yeah, Unfollow. yeah. <laughs> you, you know, it's weird. <laughs> it, as much as it is weird to watch uh, social media videos of people dancing, it's weird to watch people record social media videos in real life. Have you seen that shit? No, not really. I mean, but I, you know, I can imagine because you, you know, you see every once in a while, I will watch a video where somebody's taping something and does a prank and then they get beat up. I'm, I'm all those are my favorite. I love a good, uh, somebody who gets the, the shit beat out of them for a mean yeah. prank. Or oh, like the, a gun falls out the guy's pants that they, they like pull his <laughs> pants down and like a gun falls out. So what, what you want, my boy? But you want my boy? <laughs> and he goes, "Yo, it's a prank! It's a prank! It's a yo!" It's I'm some, it's some white kid that moved to Canarsie. That's like, is. hey, we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, it, it uh, it's a weird kind of. I mean, Harry will tell you. I've always had, even when we were in the era of television, right? I have like a weird scope yeah. of. Dante, Dante either either like something really mind-numbingly dumb or just intense stuff. So you know, Some, it's something either, brilliant. It's something like, brilliant. So he'll uh, call me up. Matter, and he's like, he's dark like, matter multiverse. Because I was watching this documentary mm. about World War II, and the, and then the next he's like, "Hey, it's it's uh, Little People's Week on the Maury Povich show. I gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I, I just. And it's funny as like now, you know, with all the streaming services, man, the stuff that I watch is is still on that on that that wide scope of just mind numbing or just wait a minute, I gotta what provoking, did he say? yeah. Mm -hmm. With, uh, the the 
you go you, the God theory. What I'm like, what is that? So it, it's um, but I, but I find that we get we get numbed out with this, um, and then it loses its it loses its emphasis. So it's like you watch all these young girls, and it, and I and I love to I kind of love to watch a girl OnlyFans girl with a single parents who's crying because nobody wants to raise your kids. You know, I don't need a man. I know that I'm a boss, man. And you're tw- like, first of all, you're 20. Like, shut up. You don't know anything. None of this is going to work out in your favor. And you're going to have to pick up the pieces. So there's that. And then there's, I would wonder, I would like to, I would wonder what the situation is also now in terms of how they earn money, you know, just over sexualizing themselves. Um, this this video of um there's one video I watched where uh the guy says, Hey, how you doing? My name is so and so. I don't want no I got a man. Right? And then he goes and gets in a Lamborghini mm-hmm. and the girl sees the car and then hey, hey, what's just just awful gold diggers? Well, you gotta take me shopping. Uh, what the thing that gets me most is that when they let her when he lets her get in his car. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I guess he's letting her get in the car because he's making the video. But I, I just want him to run her flip flop toes over with the mat, with the lamp. You just said I was ugly. You just just, you know, it's, but this it's the tolerance of this that I think that that creates a space for this for people to be this way. So if we if we're getting uh, women who are over masculine and and. I don't need a man. It's because we are feeding into that. We're allowing this. Well, we- I, oh, go ahead. No, yeah, go, go, go. No, you go. I, I really think going back to the media, because there's nobody, there's nobody calling, there's, there's no institution. Um, there's no institution punishing this behavior. There's no consequences, this, no real consequence to this behavior. Mm-hmm. Now, well, I mean, there is. It just it's coming. You know what well, I mean? It, it's 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 coming, but it's to a point. Well, yes, it's coming. I agree. Mm-hmm. It's to a point now that if we say it, no one like no one get like that's not enough yeah. for people to be like, oh, maybe I should like change my ways or whatever, right? I feel I agree with you. Yeah. In a sense where I think society is starting to see things are starting to get ridiculous, right? Like we were woke for when did Obama 2008. We were yeah. we were woke until 2008 until about last year, right? right? Now let's go down the rabbit hole a little bit, right? What has happened within that time, within the last few years, where people are kind of stepping back? George Floyd protests happened, but what happened with the result of the of that protest is that Black Lives Matter became more mainstream. So that means a lot of black people started pulling back because it, it it became too much. It turned into okay, we're tired of seeing this. We're tired of white people talking to us about this. Um, then you start seeing the founder of Black Lives Matter took some money out of the fund and went and got some mansions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So now you have people that are like, oh, okay, so we just we just get in the bag. That's what we're doing. So so people's faith in this narrative that's been going on has been breaking down and let's be there's been no real substantive substantive legal or 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 congressional change at all like exactly and because and then why because every other group got a bill passed but us right yeah so then that starts seeping into all right now the relationship between men and women right because that re- that conversation was going on concurrently while we were doing the the social justice stuff, right? Yeah. So for it was for a while, you know, you know. Yeah, protect- but you know, we we were talking about we was on Godfrey's thing, and I was saying how it's always every time somebody complains, I go, you know, there, there's a there's a quote by Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. They, you know, he's at the, you know, that act he does that actors roundtable. And he says, uh, I forget who's asking. And one of the young guy comments said, what would you... What, what is would something you, you wish you knew? Yeah. And he says, now. that too shall pass. And he's like, whatever you think, whatever you're upset about, 
it will pass. I mean, good except, or, race, good, except racism. Of course. He said but good I mean, or bad. Good or bad. Good or bad. Good or he bad. He says it'll, whatever you, whatever, once you think you have it figured out, just so you know, it will this, change. this will pass. Right. And, and I say this every time I hear somebody bitching about the state of things. I said, you watch. It, the pendulum swings one way to an extreme. Everybody panics. It swings, and then it swings back, and then it finds a middle. And I've said this a hundred times. It, the Me Too, Me Too um, movement got tamed when Amber Heard shitted in fucking Johnny Depp's bed. Depp's bed, exactly. That was, it was like, even feminists was like, come on, bitch, you can't. You can't shit in somebody's bed. That like you like you're going too far. Like that's Doc, that's Jack Sparrow. You can't there, shit in Jack Sparrow's bed. So there was a bunch of stuff happening, and who was perpetrated? It was women. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes because women were the loudest doing all of these movements, and it was the women and it, the people that perpetrated the stuff that people were like, "Whoa, wait a minute!" Happened to have been women, right? So now it's like swinging. You know the money thing. Wait with the now, mansions and but Amber you Heard. do you agree that it needed to be though? It it needed to be, but I think Americans are too petty for that shit. What What do you mean? That, that's interesting. I think now we've lost nuance. Right, Absolutely. we've lost nuance. You you uh, the way our so our society is so polarized at this point that every time something happens, it's always an extreme, right? So sure. what a person does is they get petty and they look for one, right? You know, you know those white. Wait, when you say one, what do you mean one? One example to dismantle the entire narrative. Okay. You know what I mean? Like when there's give like, me, give me uh, example. Okay, I'll give you three. When there's when there's kind of like a white conservative type person, and they're talk, there's always an issue about black. There's always a conversation about black issues, and. A thousand black people will tell them, you know, racism, redlining, you know, discrimination, reparate, you know, all that stuff. They'll find that one black person that's like, I don't know what race. And they'll be like, look, see, black people. And what they'll say is Herschel they'll say, Walker, they'll say black people are racism is a problem for black people based on what one black person says. Right. Yeah. yeah. When it came when it came to Black Lives Matter. What what happened was one person did something messed up, and then they're like, "Well, this movement's corrupt." One person, they caught yeah. one person doing something, right? And and both of those things could be true at the same it, time. It could be true, and then the Me Too movement. Amber Heard, one person. Oh, Me Too movement mm -hmm. is bullshit. That's how petty we've become as a society. Yeah, but uh, Harry, you was gonna say something because I, I know there was something on you. Were you gonna say something? I, I forgot what it was. Okay, whatever. So, it is, but so I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. saying but I, I, yes. it makes sense. I think it's always been that way. They've always tried to dismantle it. I That's think now I say. the problem mm -hmm. is that there's so much access to media that no matter what you do, there's always somebody who's gonna say no. Which which is which makes movements very difficult because. You know, you're trying to get LGBT rights and all this thing, and then there's always one person who says that this part of it is not enough, no matter what you do, mm -hmm. or, or uh, you know, things racially. This this isn't enough, you know. And then there's always extremists, no matter what. Now they just pick and choose those things because they're just out there, and they choose it. And that happens a lot, like with the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah, they're always look. Fox News always there's always a spot, like three or four spots, for a group of black people to jump in. Uh, and and take that spot, you know, the uh, what Jason uh, Shitlock, whatever his name is, Jason yeah. Whitlock, to be that guy <laughs> to go. I don't know. Candace I don't believe Owens. it. Candace Owens, uh, Stacey Candace, Dash. Yes, There's yeah. always that spot for well, that. He has a, he yeah. has, I'm going to say something about that. And I'm, I'm one of Keenan. What do you think about this? Because I want to I don't want to get too far deep into the, this waters, but. I'm not mad at Candace Owens and Jason Whitlock, Stephen A. Smith, uh, that other cop that says that there's no systemic race. I'm not mad at them. And, I, and here's why I'm not mad. Um, they are preaching to a choir that if they didn't have a choir to preach to, they would still say, think the same things. Candace Owens, Jason Whitlock, they're saying what white people are thinking innately, and they're able to say, hey, look at this black guy. 
See, he says it, so it's true. But if they didn't have one of those, they would still say the same thing. They didn't have any example of somebody, some black guy agreeing with them. It wouldn't matter. If you didn't have, uh, what's the, the judge uh, heard? Not heard. Uh, Thomas? No. Well, yeah, Thomas, but not him. I was right. talking about one of the, he was one of the TV judges, the Larry Joe Elder. Brown? Larry Joe Elder. Brown. Oh. Larry Elder. Elder if you didn't yeah. have him, they would still think what they want to say. And I know that as a as a black man anyway, who who I read constantly. So, you know, like uh, Harry will tell you, I had a uh, we years ago we had Gavin McGinnis on the show. Oh, yeah, I remember and he, that. And he well, you know, West is the best, and black people have been, white people have done it, and I, he got the, yeah. the, the historical spanking of his life. Mm -hmm. Like, you, you don't even know what you're talking about. Like, you're just talking, and you don't know what you're talking about. So, but I think there's a, there, so if these black people have decided to sell their people down the river, it's not black people that are paying them. Like, we're not subscribing to their Patreon. We're not going to see them talk. It's white people who want to be in the bubble and want to hear what they have to say anyway. And so who are they grifting? They're really grifting white folks, poor, uneducated white folks, even middle class and conservative white folks who want to hear this anyway. And they're, they're getting big money for doing that, right? But if they didn't do it, I don't think it hurts us. And you tell me what you think, because they, would, they wouldn't change what they're thinking anyway. Do you feel what I'm saying? Well, no, I mean, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. I, I think because, um, Harry, you mentioned media before, you, a few minutes yeah. ago, right? The difference now is these conversations really aren't happening privately, and they're being used as inundation, right? Yeah. They're being pushed over and over again. So before, the dynamics like the dynamics have always been the same. There's always been white people over in their groups talking about us and all that stuff, and then we're over here minding our business. And over the time, there's always been like a house Negro who's been hanging out with them and stuff, and sure, kind of it's sure. always been that way since it's, we've it's been, always been uh, Sam, Sam Jackson, Jackson from, uh, from the Django. Django. <laughs> yeah, there's always been a Steven, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. or there's always been a, a, a Uncle Ruckus. Always been right, yeah, yeah. right. One but of the greatest now, characters in television history, by the way, <laughs> underrated I, is Uncle Ruckus. But now with social media, what happens is rhythmically, it's t it's it's be it's repetitive enough that I believe people uh, more people are starting to believe it. Who who do you think is believing? Well, I mean, I can't I can't necessarily pinpoint, but I'm just saying as as a society goes, there's certain as a society. OK, like, for example, we never really said fake news before Trump said it on television. Right. And it's okay. because they kept showing it over and over again. Right. So I think what's happening, I think sometimes what's happening is we're getting the algorithm of the Candace Owens and all that stuff and everything that even though we're not giving her money. I believe there's a big. I believe there's more pe black people that agree with Candace that are becoming more boisterous. You think so? I think there's more. I think there's more. Uh, I, I and, think. And, you, and again, I, I don't think. What it's makes a, you, okay, what makes you think that? What makes you think it's more? And, and, well, I should. I should. I should preface this by saying this. I don't think it's a lot, but I think they're all on social media. You know, what I mean, so it so it gives the perception. But do you think it's more because we've always had some? We've all got a Republican uncle or a, a, a cousin that's in the police force that's well, be talking that bullshit. Uh, the, you know, the thing the thing that I do like about black people is that I feel, in my experience, <laughs> the one thing the one thing you like the, about black people. No, I mean, I like tons of things about black people. <laughs> I like my beard, right? That's um, a great beard. It is a great beard. You got to admit, it's a good beard. We've spent years towing the line, which is great because you know traditionally, Dante, we're kind of we're kind of conservative con traditionally, like when it comes to church. I mean, it's it's almost it, you know, contradictory how you have you have LGBT just littered in the black churches, but then you you you're not pro gay. Yeah, but exactly. every every Tyler Perry, every. Every Shelly Garrett movie that I saw at the Beacon Theater was, ooh, if your hips could talk. And it was always, 
the gay dude, the flamboyantly gay dude in the that that they was that stole the show. You mm -hmm. know, so we've always had that. And it's not I mean, we're seeing it hyper exposed to it in a in a real sense, but I don't I really don't think it's different other than the fact that we're more aware of it. And yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. I, I, and, and I think it's a, it's surprising a lot of us how many people will like listen to a can of and things and be like, I agree with some of that. You know what I mean? And then they'll go back to their business, right? Yeah, but I, I think we always agreed with certain things. That, I mean, like, you, you know, black people, like, contrary to what white people, white conservatives think, black people are not much different than them. We want to work. We want to keep our taxes. We want to give our kids an education. We want mm -hmm. decent mm -hmm. health care. We don't want to spend all our money in taxes. So it's, it's really not it's it's their perception of us where this becomes a thing. So my but my thing is the grift is not on black people. It's not Agreed. like you, you, it's yeah. not like you're getting the people who are on um, black people that are on the few black people that are watching Candace Owens are not are not. Uh, are um their Patreon? They're not taking their Patreon money, spending it there instead of Black Lives Matter. So mm -hmm. I think that's what's what's really interesting. Um, what is, and I think it's ridiculous because she got su she sued for racial discrimination for forty thousand dollars when she was in college. Did you know that, Harry? Uh, who Candace Candace Owens? Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't aware of that. Some, yeah, because she's from like Connecticut or some shit, right? Yeah, some white dudes yeah. were treating her like calling her trash and whatever. Listen, and I don't, I don't ever doubt that you know it's a pro wrestling. I don't think they work. believe it. I no, really it's don't. a work. It's a pro wrestling work, and yes, they they come the in heel. there to play the bad guy. They're a heel. The problem is not everyone knows that they're doing entertainment. Black people know. I I get that, but that's not who people, it's marketed towards. It's and not white for, people. Yeah. Don't care. Because if there is I agree, no, if but there's Candace, there's no Candace Owens, they still think that the same. I can you know that how you know how motherfuckers who Absolutely. you know I'm not a dumb dude and you've been around me when when white dudes treat me as if I'm not Yeah. As if the, I'm not a, a dude ask who you dumb reads. questions or they Just, they act surprised when you have information. Sure. Yeah, I've yeah, seen it. Uh, I've seen it in person. Yeah. yeah. Especially when they think my coat is not real. Oh think. my god. I still that story is <laughs> that kid is just a dumb kid who'd never seen a snakeskin coat and he I instantly love, asked. I'm telling you it's Dante's not. Coat. It's not. I know, so let, I me, know, keep, but, let me go let me go into this key real quick. Oh my god. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Harry's boy comes out, right? Goofy, goofy, mediocre white boy, right? Dirty sneaker, dirty sneaker, dirty Nike white boy, right? So I'm sitting there. I don't know if you introduced me or something. I, I did. Happen, I, you did enjoy. So I have a, I have a. I regretfully did. <laughs> I have a cobalt blue python jacket. Mm. And it's oh, me too. It's like, I mean, everybody does. Who doesn't? But it's lined with mink, right? Because so you're like, and not enough animals died making this coat. <laughs> they, they said it's python skin. They go, could you throw some mink in there and maybe uh, I, I some think baby I squirrels? Was making, I was wearing baby seal boxes at that time, yeah. right then, <laughs> and I had a bald eagle base cap, baseball cap. But uh, <laughs> uh, and I, I had some oh, dolphin God. sushi earlier that day. Um, <laughs> but he goes, he goes, he looks at the jacket. He goes, oh, I don't know. He's like, what is that? I go, it's, it's python. And he goes, is that real? Right. And so I, I don't know what I, I probably. I'll tell you what you did. You go, you're like, you're funny. You're funny. You walked away from him in a way that was clearly that it was not. You didn't find it funny. <laughs> but my contention is that he was just dumb and naive and had never seen. He just I don't know. How often do you see anybody wearing a snakeskin coat? Like, is that real? like, holy shit. I think he was being innocent about it. You feel that regardless, I'm not he saying he wasn't in it. What it. I'm saying is that the audacity to ask somebody if their shit is real is a level of comfort you shouldn't have with somebody you first met. And the fact that he felt comfortable enough to ask me that, I, I mean, he didn't even preface it. Is I've never seen anything. He just was like, "Is that real?" And I'm like, "No, hold on." He didn't. He didn't doubt. He was. It was more like a little kid. Like, "Holy shit!" Like he was uh, amazed I by it. I get it. But the thing not is, like he wasn't like, "Is that real?" Like you're a liar. You don't ask. You don't yeah. ask that. And the level of comfort that he 
would I'll, I'll ask I'll say this. If it was uh uh if it was fucking Wayne Gretzky and he had it on, he he wouldn't have asked him if it was real. Right? Hmm. It's, there's a or one or random, you know, input random rich white guy. Right? I don't know. I get I yeah, I get what you're saying, but I don't I think he still might have asked just knowing the guy. Well, well, I, I, I see where Dante is coming from. This is something that you somewhat see in corporate America a lot. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Where, because yeah. usually the owner of the company or someone higher up is a white guy, right? Oh, and, of course. And, and this is why, like, watching a show like The Office, that's why black people, we um, we relate to Stanley Hudson more than, like, any other character. Because we're like, yeah, I would be quiet and not give a fuck about my coworkers either. Because, right. you know. Right, because they don't give a fuck about you. Because they don't give a fuck about me, so I'm just going to do my job and leave at 5 o'clock, right? We right. get it, right? So what happened is it'll be one of those things where you always ask yourself the question, well, is it because I'm black? Because I'll walk into the break room and no one will say shit to me. Uh -huh. And then a, a white guy that's not even the boss, just like a white guy that people like. Everybody's like, yo, what's up, <laughs> Dustin, or blah, 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 and all that stuff, right? Dustin. And, <laughs> Dustin. and it's just one of it's just one of those things where it's where you you I hate it when I have to ask myself the question. You oh, I get that. No, you'll like, never know. Am... You'll never know. And unfortunately, that's part of unfortunately, that's the part but of the existence. This is what I'm it's saying. You yeah, do you'll know. never know for sure. You know, you do know for sure. It's like Spidey sense, dude. It's mm. you. I have been through this enough to know. Now, do I think he was being malicious? No. Right. Do I think that he was naive? Yes. But the point is, if there's a situation where she, he would be in this situation with a white dude, is there a situation where he wouldn't ask the question? And the fact that he did is 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 proof that he uh, he's asking it because how could I have that's this? not proof. It's not definitive. Sure proof. I'm proof. not even saying you're wrong, but it's not proof. Well, we're gonna, there also. I, yeah. There also is a stereotype that black people get knockoff clothing because because we because we can't afford it. That's a stereotype, right? That's true. Yeah, which, that's, which black people don't get knockoff clothes. They no, it's make a stereotype sure for white people. Yeah, right. I get what well, he's saying. But it's a, because, but it's a, yeah, but it's it's a, a stereotype, stereotype nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. Without so it. so it could have crossed his mind when he saw Dante. Oh, this is like this is like one of those like you know like in his you know we don't know his thought process, but it's like. Oh, this is probably one of them fake things. So he asked it tongue in cheek, not thinking about it. Right. But it could, but it definitely could have been because of who Dante was, right? It's the same thing like when I walk in the break room and no one speaks to me, for some reason, I'm not important enough for them to acknowledge me. Right. And then you have that internal conversation where you try to convince yourself it's not what it is. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? So yeah. and and and, and and you know what? And I'm at, I'm also at a point where I'm I if I think it is, it is. Like I'm not going to I'm not going to go through look, if I say it is, it is, I'm not going through the exercise because it's because nine times out of ten it is, and if it's not, they don't care anyway. It's a it's an interesting thing. I'm watching this, I saw the uh the 1619 project, right? And I all seen these all, all of these white scholars are saying that it is historically inaccurate, right? And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't care if it's not. It, I don't care because Columbus is historically active, like, it, accurate. I mean, there's so much of American history that's not. There's no outrage about getting it right. You have the whitewashing of history across the board and nobody cares. And so this one thing that puts the light, which was done brilliantly, which mm -hmm. I don't disagree with any of it, um, but there, there, you know, there, there's an argument, but it's like the outrage of how could this is just historically not correct. You mean like the rest of American history and how you have not taught it, or you've just omitted, or not taught it, or taught the wrong things. We're talking about uh, fucking George Washington is the never tell a lie, chop down the cherry tree while he owned 150 slaves. Like I don't want to. I don't. I'm not. I think what's happening now, and I think this is why it seems so hyperbolic, is because I don't care what white dudes think anymore. 
I'm not having the debate. And if I'm wrong, I don't give a fuck about whether you think it's wrong. I don't even care if it is wrong because it's so there's so much technical proof beyond that. And I would say that this is the same thing. Also, what I wanted to talk to you, I'm going to change gears, is religion is the same thing. There's this hyperbolic it's thing. It's hypocrisy. Of, about let's, let's get down to it. It's hypocrisy. Is what it's you're a talking hypocrisy about. about what you do, what you think, what how you perceive sexuality, how you perceive relationships, and how when you people, act on it. And then mm. your fucking kids, or your fucking, or your 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 tapping feet underneath in the truck stop, or gay and homosexuality is unacceptable, and you fucking dudes, or or you Billy Graham and his wife is fucking a young dude who's you know like. It's at some point in time, we I think we have to go. You don't have any credibility for for Trump to be talking about Ron DeSantis and him hanging out with high school college girls. Look, I love it. You know, cannibalize each other. But dog, you got a rape case. You raped the chick. You allegedly raped the chick in a in a dressing room, and then slandered her. You said grab him by the pussy. So I, I don't want to, like, where are we at in this where there's just no level of integrity? And there's no level of integrity in in media, in social media, in anything that we do. And I think what's happening, why the pendulum swings and it swings back, it's happening so much quicker. It's because nobody stands on their two feet and keeps their word. Tells the truth. So, um, so you know, I grew up Jehovah's Witness, right? Yeah, I I wanted you to yeah. talk about that too. So, and and, and don't get is, me wrong, Harry, he wasn't just a Jehovah. Like he didn't just not. He was an elder. Yeah, which, I was if an you elder. can't explain, explain that. So, so an elder is basically in each congregation. Elder is basically uh, the pastor of the congregation, but instead of one. There's a body of elders, and depending on the size of the congregation, is determined how many numbers. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's seven, you know, etc. Right, and they're in charge and guiding and teaching the congregation. Right, and the elders we received information from, like each country basically had a Jehovah's Witness headquarters. Right, and mm -hmm. and you know you know the main headquarters was in New York in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, day. yeah, right over by the bridge. And uh, Dante used to hang out there and pick up chicks. It was uh, I used to yo, and they yo. were were they thirsty, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> I think they turned those buildings into like office or apartment buildings. Yeah, I, they're, I might they're have condos to, and stuff now. I might have Dante to get still hangs one. out there though in front of that yeah, building. He still does. He still pulls the numbers. Yeah, well, well, when they come by as on the uh, the, the Jehovah Witness tour, I'm like, hey, sweetie. <laughs> What are you looking for? <laughs> Columbia Heights, Dumbo. That's an amazing neighborhood. I would yeah. love to get a spot there. Oh, yeah. Anyway, the information comes out of there. It goes worldwide. And then from there. Oh, so Brooklyn know, was the main, main hub? Yeah, it was the world. Yeah, it was the world. It was the world hub was in Brooklyn. Wow. And, Brooklyn. Then, <laughs> and then from there, it went out to the other branches. The other Bethels is what they were called around the world. And then from there, the information is communicated down the line to, you know, district overseers, circuit overseers, and eventually down to the elders. And then the elders. So they was heavy in the biggie, right? Yeah, they yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 well, actually, rap was forbidden. But <laughs> it, except it, biggie, except biggie. Yeah, because <laughs> biggie's biggie's people was uh, Joe's witness. Um, really? His moms, yeah. His moms. Anyway. <laughs> So they they communicate to the congregation, right? And the point I that's why he came up with kicking the door. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because Yo, nobody Jehovah's would answer, so you got to kick Je in the door to try to convert. <laughs> but Jehovah's Witnesses is, is a gang, I think, because no other group can go into a neighborhood on a Saturday morning and thugs, rapists, and killers will hide from you. Nobody that's else. True. That's true. Bloods and Crips are like, shut the door, man. I don't want to. They're like, get down. Oh, is it a drive by? Nah, the chain jumps at the door, son. Like, that's <laughs> exactly. That's true. And they wouldn't be like, yo, get the fuck out of here. They would just be like, oh, they would just be like, they just sit there and get out of here. Like, they ain't home. Right. And then they'll leave. But it's like, 
you left the door, you, the screen door is the only thing that's closed. I can see you. <laughs> I can see bodies in the. Anyway, so we had this thing in the Joe's Witness called Freedom of Speech. And this is why I was referring to when we were going over all those movements, Me Too movements and all that stuff. Is even though it's like hip. Now, as far as Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, I think they try the hardest to try to live a life in the, in a tune to what they preach. I mean, I, at least on a global Cons- level, level. Consistently. Or the, consistency. When, yeah. Now, when you yeah. get on the corporate level, that's a whole other conversation. But like, You're just saying the average level. person who's a member of yeah. a Jehovah's Witness member. I think said, I would... Said, I would if, they, if they were drinking the Kool-Aid, they would hit everybody but the executives. Like, if there was Georgetown in the whole... Through, you would yeah, get a lot yeah. Of- it's like one of those things where the the people underneath were like, "I'm living my life based on the rules and all that stuff." So I'm okay. trying, but you know, when you get a little bit above, then that's when you. Now let me just say because there's there's a it's come out that they have a huge pedophile problem within the within the upper ranks. Which- of- which I'll explain in a second, which brings you to my point that every elder had something called free, had to have something called freedom of speech. And what that refers to is that individually, for you to be able to teach the congregation, your reputation had to be like clean, mm. right? Like, like if I'm giving a, uh, if I'm giving, um, a talk about marriage and loving your wife, I better not have a reputation of like hitting my wife. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or I better if I'm talking about uh, moderation and stuff, I better not have a reputation of being an alcoholic. You know what I mean? Like, it's very like you have to practice what you preach, right? That's on the low level, on the lower level. That's on the low level. And but that's the way humans are, which is the reason why we were talking about Amber Heard and Patrice Colors and all that stuff. It's like, well, the reason people are losing faith in the movement, quote unquote, is because y'all are supposed to be the leaders in the movement, but you're not practicing what you preach. So naturally, humans are just like, oh, well, these people are hypocrites, right? Right, right. Now, when it comes to the other situation that you're talking about, on a corporate level, it, it's because because those cases, those cases are on the, those cases are on the local level. Mm-hmm. But then what happens is it's like an emergency nine one one, right. You know what I mean? So, like, when something like that happens, it's not necessarily, oh, we're going to sweep, like, the like I'm not going to be like, oh, we're going to sweep under the rug. That's the policy. Right. But when we're like, yo, we got, we got 911, this is happening. Right. It turns into, all right, well, it's not the church's responsibility to inform the police. You know what I mean? Does that, Why does that is make that? Oh, so, oh, it's, they, the, so it's about keeping it in-house. Well, and, and, and it's weird because it's been such a long time since I've like read and I since I've I I don't I and, and to be honest with you, it was I never had to deal with anything like that. So I didn't So okay, really, so here's a here's a here's a question. Maybe this will go ahead. bring it into bring it on home. Um the the morality, is it that the morality of Jehovah Witnesses, they believe that their morality is so above everybody that they feel as though they're not subject to this external kind of punishment that the punishment should be. Because I know, like I grew up with, with Jehovah Witness, and I know there was a chick, little hottie, that may or may have not have gotten smashed in the in the hall and uh she had to go in front of the hall and explicitly tell what she did in front of the whole congregation Mm -hmm. like blow by blow i did this that's extreme i only only had three elders that that i had to talk to but Um, but she did it she had to do it in front of well, the, what happened was the story was so long and detailed with Dante involved in it that they made her do it again. So it became like a traveling show. They got listen. I got to call the other elders about this. Cause... I got three. I got three shows on t- on Saturday. Four shows on Sunday. Yeah. I think we might have to add a show. Wait, and, uh, <laughs> so he sold out. He ate your pussy for forty five straight minutes. And then a say, lot of say elders that one more time. Out, yeah. Uh, let's 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 go back to the. Uh... <laughs> yeah. But but it was it was so so there's a so there's a few things. First, 
there's this belief that the world outside of the church is run by Satan, right? So yeah. it's like, you know, there's always the, oh, you know, Satan is, <laughs> Satan is trying to bring reproach on Jehovah's name, right? Mm, so there's so, no, you wouldn't believe it. So if you're, if that's what you're, if that's a part of something that you're thinking, right? Yeah. Like you might come, to, not you guys, but I'm using you as an example. Like you might be in my congregation. Right. And you might have hooked up with like some like 14 year old or 15, 16 year old. No, no, right? she was of age. No, he but. Did, come on now, Lo, let, let's not. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm, what do I'm I look not, like, Chris D'Elia? No, I'm not saying you guys, <laughs> but I'm saying like if I'm an elder and I'm like, oh, so 50, like, like something, like there's proof that sh- this 15 year old, whatever, right? Oh, the guy's older in the car. Who is it? Oh, it's Brother So and So. It would be it we it would be taken as a case like a fornication case, you know, and it'd be like, oh well, you fornicated yesterday. Okay, well you're just fellowshipped, right? I'm not gonna tell you to do it, but maybe you should talk to the police. But I'm not gonna, you know, what I mean, oh, wow. like, I'm so not they would not even the encourage that. Yeah, you know, you know, if you know, following, and then they'll use that scripture where it's like, I forget what the scripture is, but it's like following Caesar's law. Okay. You know, I mean, it's like, well, you know, in the state of New York, you know, Caesar's law says that, you know, you got to like register and stuff, but I'm going to leave that to you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. not going to call the cops, but right, 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 right. So, so what ended, so now what ended up happening is some people, a lot of people got loose with that. And yeah. because when you get to fellowship and stuff, or when they do the case, they type the details of the case. Right, right. And then they put in a folder and then they put in a file. Right. So now you have all these files, and if I if I'm not mistaken, I think it got to a point where the police started investigating. Oh, so it got that, it got it was that, so much they kept sliding yeah, it. The the all uh, the, the like people started investigating, like government agencies and stuff started investigating that the that the branch started saying we need to take all these files and we need to like put them all like in one spot. Mm-hmm. When nobody can find them, <laughs> so that's so that's when they start getting in trouble because they were like, "We gotta take all of these cases and try to make sure that like nobody gets to them." Right, right. Wait, who is doing files. this? The the, the elders, the, elders or the, police? The, the 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 main, the top Jehovah Witness people. So, so there was a thing. So there was a thing um, in Australia where. Branch elders and branch members have to actually go in front of a, a governmental co- uh, tribune in Australia to basically explain why they were covering up like sec- sexual abuse cases. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you can actually look it up. They're, they're, they have okay. a whole trial like on YouTube and all that stuff. Wow! Because it got to a point where they were like, "You guys aren't reporting this. Like, you're just." Doing your in- internal discipline, right, right, based on, based on bi- biblical rules, and right, right, and there, and there's not, and was it? Did they bury some of it too with the older, uh, um, you know, with the older, like if, if it was old elders that did it, did they bury that all together, or was just the whole process? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? Like, if it was elders that did so, it? Like, yeah, was... if it was somebody who was important and they just bury that all together, like, did they, you know? I'm not, I don't know enough to be able to say. Okay. But it could have been, you know, I, I okay. you know, um, like, like what they do try to do is they try to do as much discipline as they can biblically within the congregation. But when it actually comes to doing like the legal, taking like the legal action and stuff, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. where that's where the problem is. Because right. now it's you're not really you're not really um, protecting anybody because, yeah. you know, when, when that happens, you have to register as a sex offender. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. You literally yeah. people like when you come to my church or whatever, if I'm allowing you into my church again. Right. Just like you let everyone know that I was this fellowship to reinstate, you also got to be, oh, by the way, this guy, like, don't let this guy around your kids. Wow. Okay. That's the way it should be. I mean, maybe yeah. I'm going too deep. I'm sorry. No, no. I mean, I think you're right. But let's let's uh, let's go to the Patreon, and then uh, we'll talk. I want to talk about the relationship and how the relation, how religion uh, affected you and relationships and stuff. But um, what do you want to plug? Oh, um, 
Guys, I got my own podcast called the uh, Cultured Podcast. You can check it out on uh, Spotify, Apple uh, Podcasts, and uh, YouTube. Oh. Um, so you can look up my YouTube channel, Keenan Jerome Floyd Official Comedy. Please check that out. Go ahead and subscribe. And you can also follow me on Instagram at Keenan J. Floyd, K-E-N-A-N-J-F-L-O-Y-D. All right. So, Harry, talk. Uh, all my stuff is available at uh, all my social media at Harry Turjanian. Follow my TikTok, the YouTube channel. We're doing some fun stuff over there. Uh, and also uh, join us over at patreon.com slash manschool202. We're going to do the bonus episode with Keenan. And uh, and if you want relationship consultations, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Oh, uh, you can check me. Y'all know where to get me. Google me, bitch. Um, your Instagram, the Dante Nero. You know what it is. And uh, so if y'all want consultations, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Don't forget the Patreon uh patreon.com slash manschool202 please sign up y'all supporting us helps us keep doing this um and uh yo gybb get your balls back uh wwdd what would dante do the sexual revolution being podcast i love y'all man check us out on the patreon side peace